Blessings, beloved ones. This is Amara, Amanda Amethyst, and I am here with a lunar tarot scope for you for the time period between the full moon in Aquarius on August 18th and the new moon in Virgo on September 1st, 2016. Thank you so much for joining me for this reading. This is good for any time that you're seeing this video. It's intended for all of our highest good, for guidance and support, for our continued unfoldment and alignment with our highest selves during the time period between the full moon in Aquarius, August 18th, and the new moon in Virgo, September 1st. And it's also good whenever you see it. There's something in this for you to hear whenever you come across it. All right, so once again, thank you so much for joining me, and also thanks for liking the video, commenting on the video, and sharing it with your friends here on YouTube or Facebook or wherever you come across it. Um, this is a general reading for everybody who watches this video. If you're interested in a personal reading, you can contact me directly at nectarofthegoddesstemple at gmail.com. Okay. So I'd love to share some of the insights which I have received uh, prior to the reading. I came across a writing that I did several years ago uh, where I was taking notes from a book that I was reading and I came across something that I feel like is really beautiful and I just felt called to share it. And it is a verbal equation. So it says intention plus action plus non-attachment to outcome equals total success. So again, intention plus action plus non-attachment to outcome equals total success. And since we're all on that journey towards total success, I thought that would be a useful tool for us. Um, so this ties in really nicely to some of the, the guidance that I've been receiving about non-attachment. Um, this is really a time to let go. Let go of all forms of attachment that feel like they might define you. So this could be attachment to physical objects. Uh, for example, right now I'm clearing out most of my personal belongings and letting go of a lot of physical objects, uh, some of which I've had for a really long time. So. Let go of all of our attachments to items or to relationships or to even past identities, past stories that we tell ourselves about who we are. We can let go of those old stories and when we do that it opens up space for a new story to be created. Um, we can redefine ourselves through our stories, through again, our belongings, and through our actions and beliefs. So it's time for us to all take an honest look at where we are right now and also at how we have all been acting in this world. Um, you can also ask for feedback from a trusted individual who you know loves you and has your best interests at heart. Um, so as a caveat to that, if you do not feel that there's someone like this in your life right now, um, then just skip this step and continue with your own self-work because it's, it's not worth it to put yourself in a position of vulnerability. Well, that's not, I don't want to use that word. It's, it's, it's just good to only ask for feedback from people who you know for sure have your best interest at heart and not people who are manipulative or um, vengeful or have some sort of weird energetic control thing going on that might take that opportunity to act in a way that, that we're not aligned with. So if you do seek outside counsel, be sure it's from a trusted and loving friend. All right. Um, so taking this honest self-assessment of, of where you've grown into a new being and also of those places where growth is still possible, where perhaps we are 
acting in a similar way to a way that we've been acting for a really long time and it's time that we can move on. And the first step is recognition, recognizing that we are perhaps acting in a way which is not fully in alignment with who we intend to be and who we are. So recognizing when we are acting in ways that are not aligned with that and then choosing so this also has to do with being present in the moment when we have that awareness that we're acting a certain way. We can then choose in that moment to stop that pattern and act in a different way, choose a different outcome. So a good question for this is, what would my higher self do? You can think about it, you can feel into it, uh, visualize it, and really make it real for you. What would my higher self do? Not what have I done in the past, <laughs> uh, but what would my higher self do? And really feel into that and create it and then choose and take action from there. And so it is. So it will be the change in your life. Okay. Other messages that have been really coming through lately are about gentleness and nurturing. This, it's almost like a mothering energy of love. It's a very soft, nurturing energy, um, making sure that all aspects of yourself really are feeling okay and really are feeling taken care of and acknowledged. Um, so nurture yourself first and also others as well. This will create a safe space for authenticity, for vulnerability, and that's really what brings us true joy, the, the ability to feel safe, to be authentic, and to be vulnerable is what brings us true joy in relationships with other people. And so we can offer this gift to ourselves and also to others. So we're, I feel like we're all right on the verge. We're right on the edge of something huge. There's a big shifting point coming where it feels like the end of a cycle. And it feels like the end of a big, long cycle and the beginning, so next new moon would be the beginning of this entirely new cycle. Potentially. I'm not exactly sure what the timeline is, but since we're doing a lunar tarot and I'm getting all of this information right now for the full moon, uh, it leads me to believe that by the time of the next new moon, we'll be in a completely different place than we are right now. So what does that mean? That's why we need to let go. That's why we need to let go of all our attachments to all of this old stuff or old ways of being, old patterns, and take the plunge. Dive in or dive out. Uh, do what is being asked of you or told to you or demanded of you, depending on uh, your guidance and how long you've been potentially not acting on this guidance. Um, so I'm talking not about doing what some external authority figures tell you that you should do. I'm talking about doing what is being asked of you by spirit, by goddess, or god, or creator. Or what's being asked of you by, by your guides, by your ancestors, by your higher self, by your own inner knowing. You know what to do and sometimes it can feel scary because it doesn't align with what you should do um, but this is really a time since we're right on the verge every time we're on the edge like this it's a choice point we can choose to jump into the next cycle or we can choose to cling to this past cycle and it's up to you either way it's all perfect I personally I'm choosing to jump into the next cycle and I encourage everybody to um, make whatever choice feels highest for you. If you also want to join me in taking the plunge, then do it. Do what's being asked of you or told to you. Let go of your fears. Let go of your sense of limitation because it's all self-imposed. So for this reading, I'm going to be using the fifth tarot, 
which is created by Martine and Teresina Bakins. And I'll also be pulling an oracle card from the Goddess Guidance Oracle by Doreen Virtue. And for these readings, I call upon my subconscious inner child, my fully awakened adult, my higher self, my guides, angels, ancestors, ascended masters, star beings, inner earth beings, elementals, any and all beings who love me unconditionally to support this reading for all of our highest good and the greatest good of all that is to provide guidance and clarity, insight for the time period between the full moon in Aquarius, August 18th, and the new moon in Virgo, September 1st, 2016. If I have uh, your permission, I will also call upon your teams. At this time, if I do have your permission, you can energetically or verbally consent. For those who have consented, I call upon your subconscious inner children, your fully awakened adults, your higher selves, your guides, angels, ancestors, ascended masters, star beings, inner earth beings, elementals, any and all beings who love you unconditionally to support us in this reading for your highest good and the highest good of all that is. Thank you, thank you, thank you for joining us. Thank you for your guidance each and every day. Hmm. We ask to be shown clearly and in ways which we can easily understand and implement guidance for our highest good during this time period of how we can take the plunge and move ourselves forward into the next highest cycle possible for us. This one. Okay, and I'll also pull from the Goddess Guidance, this one. All right, our first card, beautiful, is the Sun. This is a major arcana card. The sun is about our creative potential and being channels and conduits for the solar creative energy of the masculine god or creator, father sky energy. Um, this particular card to me also indicates working with a partner and um, a very deep soul partner. This could be like a twin soul type relationship or a romantic partner or a very close soul friend or soul family member. And the two are embarking on a journey together and... either doing their sacred vocation, so this is either a work thing, or embarking on a new part of their relationship with each other. Okay. And this is in the fire suit, so this has to do with our passion, our creativity, kundalini energy, sexuality, um, what we are creating in this world. And actually, I was going to mention Eros earlier, and so I'll bring it up now. Um, the divine creative power of Eros, which is the alchemy of sexual pleasure and love, is a very creative force for us to work with in this, in this reality and in these bodies. Hmm. Uh, we've also got... So there's a solar eclipse in this image, and there's also a, um, well, now I can't think of the word, um, a crop circle. <laughs> and there was recently, there have been some recent crop circles found. You might want to look those up. Um, so this is a lot of solar energy. This is also a lot of cosmic energy from star beings as well, from other star systems. 
not just our own. And the sunflowers. So it's time for us to bloom. These sunflowers are in bloom. They're sharing their beauty and their gifts with the world. And then they'll spread their seeds to propagate again in the future. So this is a really potent card. This is owning your power as a creator and also owning your co-creative powers with other beings. And the second card we received is the One of Feathers Divine Mind. <laughs> I'm just sort of laughing a little because I feel like we receive this card a lot. So this card is in the air suit, which is all about our mental body, our minds, our perceptions of reality. So this, again, is leveling up to a new octave. It has the, the eagle on it. So this is inviting us to take a look with the eyes and the sight of eagle. Eagle is not limited to our earthbound perspective of the world. Eagle has a different perspective, and Eagle Vision is extremely clear and can see for a very long way. So this is also about prophecy, about knowing, about seeing clearly what is happening in our world, and also seeing clearly the pathways that people can use to get out of it, because although not every being has the same sight as eagle, when we allow leadership from eagle, we can follow the insight that and the sight, the vision that eagle has to move those who are earthbound through what could otherwise be an impossible situation. So this is a leadership card as well. This is a card of acknowledging your vision and your not, your awareness and using those tools properly and in a space of love and for the highest good of all to lead and guide others. This does not necessarily mean telling others what they should do. Sometimes it does mean that. Um, but it's being that operating from that place of expanded view allows others to also do that. It's like leading by example. And again, leveling up because there's this swirl leveling up. And it's a one. It has all of the creative potential. Hmm. And then our last card, which we received, is the seven of feathers balance so this is a blue jay on on this beautiful card and there's dark and light so this is a balance between the masculine and feminine a balance between the different sides of our mind the rational thinking mind and the creative thinking mind it's also noting that there has to be some form of balance as we shift. So we're talking about a lot of movement here, a lot of shifting, and we've been talking about, and I'll continue to talk about because it's happening, the shift in consciousness that's happening now. So I know that some people, myself included sometimes, can feel a little bit frustrated with um, so much energy being diverted to things like our election cycle and other things which are not actually progressing us anywhere. Um, again, that's my own judgment. <laughs> but so this card is an acknowledgement that we need a balance. We can't just all of the sudden all have the exact same. I'm not exactly sure how to word this. I'm going to, it's still coming through. Balance is a process, and so it's kind of, I'm seeing a balance beam right now, so it's a process, it goes back and forth, it teeters back and forth, 
So as we're continuing to tip the scales to consciousness, to a uh, unity consciousness, there's going to be some wobble back, potentially. And that's okay. Um, and we can also balance, the way that we can balance this is by staying centered in our worldview, in our way of thinking, in our consciousness. So even though there may be some instability in the world around us, we can maintain a balance by holding the vibration of love, holding the vibration of unity and joy. So finding what brings you joy and living that. And this will help all of our brothers and sisters as well. Okay, and our last card... <laughs> another more birds Athena inner wisdom you know what to do trust your inner wisdom and take appropriate action without delay so owl medicine again well not again more bird medicine the owl is one of Athena's totems and there's also a rainbow wing which to me is reminiscent of an angel wing. Um, Athena is a very powerful, very wise leader goddess. She is also a warrior goddess. But she uses her knowledge and her her deep understanding as her uh, tools for battle. She's also wearing a Pegasus necklace, which is the winged messenger. So this is also reminding me of this messenger. So be, use your awareness, use your inner knowing, connect with the moon. You can see also the moon in the back of this image. Connect in with the full moon. Connect in with all of the lunar energies throughout the cycle and with your own body as your body moves through cycles as well to know what is right for you. Um, she is also visibly outside in nature, so spending time outside in nature, there's a vine on this image, so spending time near trees, in a green space, particularly beneath the light of the moon, is a very powerful practice right now for you to connect with your inner knowing. And as we were talking about earlier before the cards, it's time to act on your inner wisdom. And Athena is telling you, you know what to do. Trust yourself. Trust your inner knowing. Because it will guide you in the highest path for you. So thank you all so, so much for joining me here for, for this Lunar Tarot Scope. I really appreciate, again, all of the likes, comments, and shares. Please do let me know if this is relevant for you in your life. And much love and many blessings to you until we meet again.